2014 is our centenary year. The church was uh, first opened as a place of worship in October 1914. People who live in this community today talk an awful lot about how the community has changed and we're interested to see whether this is a more recent phenomenon or whether in fact change has been a constant of this community over the past 100 years. Well, I hadn't been down to Ilford for a long time but um... On what people have told me, it's not the same as it used to be. I can remember it as a place that you enjoyed going down and walking around and looking at the shops, you know. The shops have changed. There was um, a Mac Fisheries. That was on that side of the road. Woolworths. This side of the road there was Lillian Skinner's. And there was a Dulce's. Dulce's was the other side. One of the findings is that in fact change has always been reflected in the life of this community. One of the things that churches have to do today, I think, is to uh, look to what their um, role is in the community and work alongside other partners, people of faith and people of no faith to promote what for Christian people would be the essence of, of, of Christianity, concepts such as peace and love and harmony. I've lived in Ilford all my life and Went to Christchurch School locally and St Clement's Church and now St Margaret's. My mother and her sister, there's a photograph of them dancing in the school hall, which we've just retaken with my granddaughter's class about a hundred years later. All my life I've lived in Ilford. I actually lived on a council estate in council flats when I was a child that were just newly built. The Ilford of my youth was uh, a very middle class area. Children went to grammar schools, people did very well, people went on to college and universities as well as going to work. I started at Christchurch School on my fifth birthday. I was already very familiar with the school because I used to go in there with my sister when my mother took us in there. I love school. We, it was very, very narrow curriculum. I think we did sums in English most of the time, and all through the second, the uh, juniors, it was preparation for the 11 plus. Mrs. Lancaster, who was my teacher, said that there were 50 people in this room, counting her, so 49 children. The women's fellowship consisted of about between 35 and 40, 40 ladies, all ages. I suppose the highlight was when I took over from Mrs Ross when she was taken into hospital. We used to have speakers from different places, slideshows, half-day trips out in the afternoon sometimes to various uh, factories such as Kleenex, Cherry Blossom Boot Place at Chiswick. But we always had a fish and chip tea before we came home. That was one of the highlights of the day. I went to what is now Valentine's High when it was Ilford County for Girls and uh, so Valentine's Park was right next door. All my childhood was here. We used to play up the top of the park near Valentine's School as um, it was dense rhododendron woods and we used to play in there and the park keepers of course were trying to keep us safe and used to chase us out. They used to take our name and addresses and we used to give false names. And, and if they caught us twice on the same day, we'd 
swap out jumpers and cardigans and things and pretend to be somebody else, which is pretty naive. I don't think they were ever fooled. <laughs> We would sometimes go out into the park in the summer with our sandwiches and sit by the, the, the long ponds and feed the ducks and hide in the grotto. Also go over to what no longer exists, which was the open air Lido, which was a real feature of the park. And um, right from a child, that was one of the places that we would go in the hot weather. It was also the place we had to go for our school swimming lessons. There'd be a board telling you just how warm or rather cold it was in the water. And, and so we used to go swimming there. And, and there was many a days when you could hear the shrieks of the girls as they all had to jump in because it was so cold. <laughs> you just wanted to jump straight out again. In more recent times, I suppose, change shows itself in that we are a much more transitory population and the religious and ethnic makeup of this community is uh, very mixed and very diverse. Because of my work in education, working with pupils of uh, ethnic minority backgrounds, um, I've been in the position to chart some of that change over the last 20, 25 years. Milford always has been multicultural. If you go back in the records, you find that people were coming into Ilford for jobs, place to live. Even 100 years ago, they were coming from all arts and parts. So Ilford always has been a melting pot, shall we say. So much has changed, so many groups have come into Redbridge and it has really uh, changed into this multi-ethnic population with new groups constantly coming in. And that is exactly representative of St Margaret's congregation where when I first came it was mostly white people and now it is completely representative of the area in which it sits. Generally speaking, though, people who come, come to Ilford, wherever they come from, are, I have to say, on the whole, people who want to do well. I mean, that, that, that's a fact. It's interesting that change comes out as one of the themes of the last 100 years in this community. I'd like to think that the church would see change in a positive way. I think that we can harness for good uh, lots of goodwill and positive spirit to work to bring about a more harmonious, caring, loving community.